In this video, I'll show you how to create a web design proposal from scratch. This is the exact same template I use for my six-figure freelancing business. Want to download the Word template document? Click the link in the description. Here's what I'll cover in this video. Creating an effective proposal, what goes inside a proposal, sending the proposal, and getting it signed. Let's get into it. The quick and easy way is to use an existing proposal template provided in Client Manager, but if you'd like to create it from scratch, then follow these steps. Get a clear client brief, write the proposal, send the proposal, and follow up. You cannot create a solution for a problem that you do not understand. To get a client brief, ask your client these questions. What does your business do? Who is your ideal target market? What is the desired action you would like a website visitor to take? What makes you unique from your competitors? How much is an average customer worth for your business? How do you currently get new customers? How many customers do you get on average per month? Do you have professional images and a brand identity? And lastly, when would you like the project completed by? Now that we know this information, we can create the proposal. Here's what the proposal should include. We've got a cover page, project overview, pricing options, and terms of the agreement. Starting with the cover page. A pretty cover page is not going to win your client over. They want to see what solution you can deliver. So don't spend hours on this. Make sure your cover page includes your business information, client information, and the date. Here's an example of a very quick intro on the cover page that I use. Next is the project overview. The project overview is the most important part of your proposal. This is your opportunity to convince your prospective client that you understand their needs and you have the right solution for them. Focus on highlighting the client's problem and showcasing your solution. Highlighting the problem, for example, their goal might be to generate more free consultations which will result in more paying clients. Next, you highlight their current problem. According to your data, only 2% of website visitors request a free consultation. The key here is to use the same language your client uses when they talk about their goal and the problems they need to solve. It's important that you don't use jargon that the client won't understand. Showcasing your solution. Next, talk about how you plan to solve their problem. Keep it about them. You want the client to get excited about your solution. It's important that you don't go into too much detail there. Don't focus on the technicalities. Focus on the outcomes. In this case, a solution to the problem may be, the goal would be to double the number of free consultation requests from 2% to 4%. When doing proposals and showcasing the value, I always like to benchmark it to the annual value. So here's an example. At an average value of $2,000 per client and based on double your existing monthly client signups, i.e. four per month, I'm confident we could achieve four additional signups per month, or in other words, 48 additional signups per year, and that would equate to $96,000. Next, you need to know how much to charge for the project. I've got a very detailed video on pricing right here, but as a quick summary in 20 seconds, there are four ways to charge for a website. We've got fixed pricing, that is when you charge a set price for the entire project. We've got hourly pricing when you charge based on the number of hours worked. Then we've got value-based pricing. That's when you charge based on the potential sales increase. And finally, packaged pricing. That's when you offer a fixed monthly rate for specific services over a set period. The actionable takeaway when it comes to pricing is choose the best pricing method for your web design services considering the project scope, your experience, and the client's needs. Now that we've determined how to charge, we need to determine what we'll charge. Here's my main advice when it comes to showcasing your pricing. Always offer three pricing options. Never present the client with just one option. Always give them three. Why, you might ask? For one thing, a proposal is an opportunity to upsell your services. But there's also an important psychological aspect at play. Most people like choices but not too many choices. Marketing experiments have shown time and time again that three is the magic number when it comes to pricing tiers. Now let's focus on how to use this pricing strategy to construct our three pricing options. Option one should be based on the essential service your client needs. 
Option 2 should be 50 to 80% more than option 1. It needs to include a few additional value adds on top of what you are offering under option 1. That leaves us with option 3. This should be 50 to 100% higher than option 2 and add on some premium services or a retainer option for ongoing services. So here's an example of what this will look like. Option 1 will be $3,000, option 2, $5,000 and option 3, $10,000. You want option two to seem like the most reasonable offer based on value for money, which most clients are likely to go for, but you'll still get some who go for option three. After the pricing, we need the terms of the agreement. While this might sound like the most boring part, it actually represents the most exciting part of the proposal, and that is closing the deal. The terms of agreement lays out in black and white exactly what you're going to deliver and what the client is going to pay. Here are a few things that you need to cover in this section. Your pricing option, your payment terms, any agreed upon timelines or deadlines, any guarantees you provide on your work. Once your client has a clear understanding of what they are signing up for, don't leave any doubt about the next steps they should take. Just as a quick note, when it comes to getting payment, always get 100% payment upfront. Only if it's a deal breaker, then do 50% upfront and the remaining 50% on an agreed upon date, not on completion, as completion is relevant. Now, the final stage of a proposal is getting it signed. And as a shameless plug, you can do this easily within Client Manager. But either way, whichever tool you use, you need to get it signed by the client. You've put in the work, now it's time to let your proposal do the talking. All you need to do is send a straightforward email and attach your proposal as a PDF or send a URL for digital signing. Here's a simple email you can use. Hi, client's name. Thanks for discussing your business with me yesterday. I've compiled three options I believe will help you achieve the business goals we've discussed. Please review my proposal and let me know if you have any questions. I'll contact you next week Tuesday if I haven't heard from you by then. Regards. And finally, it is about the follow-ups. Most freelancers and agencies don't even take advantage of this final phase. If you haven't heard back from your client after a week, you need to follow up with them. Sure, it's possible that they might be ghosting you, but they're probably just busy or distracted. So don't be shy. Keep following up every week until you get a yes or a no. So what happens if it's a no? I think it's important to find out why. Don't let your disappointment rob you of an opportunity to get valuable feedback you can learn from. Maybe your pricing was too high, or maybe the client was unclear about the value you were offering. Maybe even it is a lack of confidence in your abilities. Either way, get the feedback, learn, adapt, and grow as you go. Alrighty, that is it in this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you're not in my freelancing community yet, consider joining for free. We have a lot of value with freelancers starting out all the way to agency owners making over $100,000 a month. Join us at freelancefam.com. Cheers for now.